What is going on, all you GBA type people? I know I haven't put a video out in a while, but what's up? It's your boy Tom. And I'm here, and I'm going to be doing my... If anyone watched my ICBA draft analysis, I'm going to be doing it the same way, where I'm not going to discuss, oh, this is the Pokemon, this is its stats, this is its ability, this is its typing, it learns this, and it's really good. If you have the internet, use the internet. I'm sure you can go look somewhere and find stats and... I'm sure you've watched draft analysis at one time or another in the portion from X and Y to now in terms of drafts. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just I don't find any sort of benefit in terms of doing a draft analysis that way anymore. So I'm going to do it my way. And my way is going to encompass discussing why I picked them on, where I did, and how it affected the whole mentality of the draft. I'm also going to discuss uh, potential snipes, what I was looking at, and how the draft kind of, how it unwinded in terms of pick by pick and how I developed my team. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at, I mean, obviously I had the fifth pick, so I was very excited. I mean, I know certain mods were gonna go before my pick, but two mods that I was looking at prior to my uh, to my pick at number five was Marshadow and Aveltal. And I would see that Leo, as well as Randy, both took those mods. I think Mega Mawile as the second overall pick was a bit suspect. I see like why Aster did it, but in terms of the better fairy steel that was available, I don't know if that was you know meant to go as soon as it did. But hey, it's Aster, and I'll be playing him, so I'm going to say that now, and then he's going to fist me with Mega Mall Wild later. Besides that, I think Lunala was also on my list for my tier one Mega uh, or tier one Pokemon. Discuss is like Lunala, really good as a cleaner. However, I think the whole hazards management kind of discouraged me a bit mostly because I think my play style doesn't necessarily want to worry about dealing with oh does uh, does this hazard need to stay away from the from the field and then it, that allows Luna onto the field versus Mega Lucario just seemed like something I can click buttons and adaptability boosted you know bullet punches and meter mashes and close combats and drain punches and all that is just really really great so I'm excited to use Mega Lucario I was very excited that I got to meet at number five. I thought someone like Aster or even Deathly would have taken it before me. So we're going to keep going. Um, we see a lot of tier one picks go in the next, you know, it, pretty much in the later part of the first uh, the first round. I mean, the first, like, real snipe, I guess I could say, was maybe Protein Greninja, because I, I was thinking about taking that on the way back. However, that would have made my first two picks fighting weak, and I really want to have to patch that up right immediately. Um, the second thing... Shaman Sky. That's something I really wanted in Tier 2. I know uh, Tup had mentioned that you know he was happy that, that was there because it is his favorite Pokemon, I think. But seeing him take it when he did, while it was surprising, I understand. I don't think he liked a lot of the actual Tier 1s. So he did actually, you can see here, he opted for 2. So he took Ash Greninja as well as Shaman Sky. So that was really the first like snipe. Which I wasn't necessarily upset with. I mean, I it was kind of a pipe dream to get Shaman Sky back to me. But if it did, that would have been cool. I would like having those two just really solid physical breaker and then a special breaker. And then just having those two would be really dope. Uh, going through the second round, I mean, I wasn't really interested in a lot of these. Uh, I think, uh, kind of like when I was talking about um, Mega Mall while earlier, Kieran Black pushed Jirachi. While it's really solid in like a regular style draft, in this draft, a little bit weird, but we see Lars kind of patches that up later on in the draft. Uh, Jolt getting Magirna and Mew is gross. Vomit, yuck, gross. Uh, going through the rest. Um, yeah, nothing here really stands out to me in terms of something I wanted. I mean, maybe Zero Aura, but in terms of an electric type, uh, I was actually more excited to see this go than for me to get it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm actually really glad that I got what I got, and, and that's Tapu Koko. A Tapu Koko is a mod I've never used in draft before. However, I've always seen it do really well. And uh, just the fact that I'm able to actually grab it this draft and use it in tandem with Mega Lucario really makes my team um, very fun to use. I know Coco is one of the, the only tier 2 mods that has accessibility to Z moves. And that also excites me because that means that I can designate it as a Z user. As if you guys don't know, we can designate any two mons on our team as Z users, and we have one change during the regular season to change one of our Z users. So um, I'm excited to see how that how Coco is going to be um, used on my team. It, it it does you know cater a lot to my playstyle, whereas Volt Switch or U-Turn 
It also has access to Calm Mind and then just like Z access to, to Flying, Electric, Fairy, um, you know, Bug, whatever. But the point is, it's going to be a really solid mod to coincide with Mega Lucario and a very solid special breaker. So we go through. Um, I did kind of want Garchomp. It, it wasn't imminent, but if I could have got it, that would have been great. But something that really uh, stood out on the way back was Weavile. Now, Weavile also something I haven't really used, but I know that it does uh, effectively break uh, grounds for both Lucario and for Coco, as well as bulky psychics that Mega Lucario may not be able to break outright. So having that as, a, as an offensive check to things that may stop Coco and Lucario was a very smart call, and I appreciate picking this thing up when I did. Because uh, I like having these three good offensive picks starting off to then uh, be able to adjust. I mean, kind of using the rest of the draft to develop defense. So going through the rest of the third round, again, there really is not much here. Like maybe, I mean, if I didn't get Coco, I would have wanted Zapdos. So that was kind of my second choice below Coco. Just because it would have been cool to, to use Zapdos. I only used it one time, I think it was in the CCL. But besides that, nothing here is really standing out to me. My other option besides Mega Lucario is Mega Deancey in case that went. But again, it doesn't really, you know, it, it doesn't upset me that I, I got to pick what I did, where I got to pick it. Hell, I didn't even think that Mega Lucario or Coco were going to make it back to me. So the fact that they did makes me extremely ecstatic versus like, oh no, I didn't get to pick other thing. That was a second choice. So going through the rest of, of uh, the, the third round, Again, nothing here is really like standing out to me. Just a lot of picks that I think this round, especially even the fourth round, I looked at a lot of things and just went, okay, that went, that went, that went, cool, cool, great, fine, awesome. Um, because a lot of these picks, it, to me, while well, I understood why they went to who they did, we have tier four Gliscor, all right? Tier four Gliscor. Gliscor has been one of the mons that I have wanted to use for such, such a long time. I think it's a very solid wall. I think it's an offensive check. It has pivoting options and U-turn. And, you know, a Stealth Rock option, obviously, which my team blocked up to this point. But also, you know, it, it's a solid, you know, ground flying type. And and not even just that. Toxic Orb, you know, it, it's bulky. And I like that. Uh, and it, I think it was a good pairing with both Coco and with Lucario for the ground immunity. So I'm interested to use Gliscor for the first time ever. And I think that it's a very solid addition. Now, Rotom Watch does go after score I, it was kind of on my list but that's again i took coco instead of you know rotom or zapdos or or anything that i would be concerned of in terms of having electric type and having a, a solid electric mon so like i said these first four picks i was very happy to have all of them very minimal snipes very minimal things that i thought were upsetting uh in terms of the whole premise of the team because then we hit round five and i just get fucking annoyed because I was going to go after Rosa Raiden. Fucking Randy, who I have to play. He's in my division this year, or, uh, in this season. I wanted Rosa Raiden. And I didn't think at any, in any feasible part of my brain that I was going to get either Gliscor or Rosa Raiden. So I made the 50-50. I'm glad I got Gliscor. It's just, unfortunately, I wanted Rosa Raiden. Mostly because I think it paired really well with the team. Spike support, T-Spike support, and I've used it. And I'm comfortable with it from last season. Uh, the other option there was Neoligo, which, again, went right afterward. Then I went with Amoongus. Now, Amoongus was kind of mm, suspicious. I wasn't... I'm not excited to grab it. Uh, I think it was just kind of a... It's a good Toxic Spike option. Um, if anything, it's something that will go in terms of free agency. I'll just let it kind of go bye-bye and never see it or use it again. We'll see how it functions on the team in terms of building. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we can't make any transition or transactions in week one. Uh, we have to use our, our actual drafted team for the entirety of our week one matches. Week two, we can change our team. So we'll see how this goes. Um, but Amoongus, a bulky mon, you know, Psychic Grass, two things that I, I didn't have up to this point. It's an interesting mon. It's a ground, it's a ground immunity for both Coco and Lucario. And maybe it fit well right here. I don't know. We'll have to see how it, how it operates. And if nothing else, it's going to go bye-bye uh, based on the rest of this draft. So we keep going on. Uh, again, a lot of these mons, I think, were really solid where they went. T5 Ditto at round or in round six, I'm sorry, round five was a bit suspicious. But in terms of this draft, yeah, I definitely understand why it went so early. So we continue on here. Uh, Large team is looking real scary with these really bulky mons and just a bunch of heavy hitters. Uh, I think even like MV's team is looking pretty good. Jolt's team just fucking fuck you, Jolt. 
<laughs> Gotta play him too. And Danza as well. Two really solid players that I am always excited to play against. However, these teams, uh, they just got made some really, really solid picks at their point in the draft. You know, having the wheel and then, of course, the, the up to the wheel was really, while it's a detriment, the picks they were able to make were actually kind of impressive. So I do think it's it's cool what they were able to pick and how they were able to construct such a solid first six mons. I think Manaphy was kind of on my list. It wasn't imminent, but it was there. Uh, cool for Jolt being able to pick that up and make his team look that much spookier. Uh, we see that Lars takes his favorite mon in terms of Lander's eye. So we'll see how that thing just causes issues. We see the thing that uh, no one can spell ever. Just Oh, and then, okay, okay. All right, so here's another snipe. I actually wanted Latias. Uh, I end up picking Latios, spoiler. But I, I wanted Latias mostly because I was a, a, it's a bulky defogger. It's a bulky dragon. Uh, a bit better of a combine user. Um, I wasn't disappointed that I didn't get it. I was just like, fuck you tough. Because, I mean, Shaman Sky and then Latios or um, Latias. So that kind of forces me to take forces me to take Latios. So again, not upset with that. I mean, yes, it's going to be less bulky, a little more offensive. So it kind of pairs nicely with the sort of a special uh, attacker to coincide with Coco that I have now with Lucario and Weavile on the physical side. It does have setup options, a lot like you know Lucario or Weavile do, but it also has breaking options, and it could be a very solid Z user, which. Spoilers, I actually do making it my second Z user because obviously, you know, Devastating Draco and Shattered Psyche and you know other coverage moves are really, really good on Latios. So we'll see how that works out for me. Um, going through the rest here, uh, Tyranitar was way too overpriced for me to even consider that. Uh, and also, I just don't like having Sand or Unnerve as my only two options. Uh, Leo's team is looking really disgusting too. It looks very... Hmm. Leo E, where it's just it's like fat disgustingness with you know Lucario and Garchomp and Snorlax. Like it just looks like a Leo team, honestly. But Comfey is kind of trash. I'm just gonna throw it out there, especially because I have two BP users, so I don't really expect him to bring that if I face against him. So we keep going through, and I wanted Arachnid to you know last to me. I think the only person I thought was going to threaten taking it was uh, Randy, mostly because I didn't think he had, well, he took Suicune, maybe it wasn't him. No, no, it was um, it was Leo. I remember I spoke to him privately and I asked him, hey, what are you thinking about taking? And he remember he told me Alamola because he was looking at my team thinking I was going to go the Amoongus Alamola uh, dual regen core versus I wanted something like Araquanid because I like the Spadef, uh, I like the, the typing, which actually does also cement my ground weakness because obviously a when it is not bulky on the defensive side but because of its typing really doesn't care much about earthquake and of course i have like leaf's life and options in terms of you know utilizing its bulkiness now it's not a wish passer it's not all that i mean it's frail defensively in hp but i do like it as a mon and i got being able to use it but in terms of being a sticky web user it can greatly um aid Mega Lucario as well as Weavile and Coco just to ensure that Scarfers and other fast Ermons don't become an issue. So I could, it's kind of nice and, and I'm excited to, to use a Rack when did that. And, and I was excited that it lasted to me. So we keep going through Buzzwall, I mean Arcanine, whatever. A lot of these picks now are kind of become more of the bulky Mons now that people have developed their tier one and tier two picks. I was eyeing up Miltank, but that wasn't imminent for me to take. Uh, going through a lot of mons that I, I think were just kind of fillers for people. Uh, then of course Jolt takes a little nine tails to fit with his first, you know, five mons. Uh, again, the the phrase "fuck you, Jolt" just comes to mind. Um, we keep going through, and a lot of these mons just don't necessarily stand out to me as like awful picks. Just some things go before others, and you know, other mons just kind of stay up on there on the board, which sort of impressed me now throughout this entire these entire two rounds i wanted Kefargus mostly because i thought it, it paired well with araquanid i think it's a very solid defensive mon i suspected a few people were going to take it so when i see a lot of these mons go that were more support mons or you know stop gaps for people in terms of what they were lacking i thought it was very interesting most of the see Kefargus go very very early in other mo and other drafts, especially GBA drafts, because if I'm sure you guys are aware, a lot of the drafts, I mean, people are going to pick up like two to three or tops four offensive mons and start filling their defense. That's kind of what I did. It's what a few other people did as well. So 
seeing the, that I got Kovagas all the way back after getting a Raquinid, I like that now I have, you know, defensive check and Gliscor, Kovagas, a special defensive check and a Raquinid, even AV Amoongus. Uh, so I kind of have some sort of defensive, you know, presence forming. Um, a Raquinid can check like ice types, and you have Amoongus and Gliscor that can check ground types, and I, I think it's a nice, nice pairing. Um, they're a bit frail in the HP department, except Amoongus, but I don't know, I think they all have their, their solid traits. I like the fact that I was able to get those two in these drafts, or in these positions. I didn't expect myself to, but hey, I did. So, we see Leo finally takes Alamola. I'm going to keep going through, and um, a lot of these picks, I mean, Hoopa U all the way this late was very interesting. I ended up taking Cloyster, which I didn't expect anyone to take, but in an Uber's format, having an accessibility to uh, a bulky spiker as well as a spinner, I thought was pretty pretty key because getting one or two layers of spikes up, getting two spikes up, or having some sort of clutch fast er spinner would be really nice to aid again Coco and Lucario. That's kind of the whole point of the team. Uh, also, just having a, a smasher or something that kind of be like max defense because uh, I, I like the fact that Cloyster can be such a defensive wall despite its typing and a lot of people not really liking it. I love Cloyster. I think it's a very solid and interesting. Mon to use, just a lot of people don't really give the time of day based on its tiering or especially its typing, you know, but I like having a, a second ice type that, you know, could potentially be used uh, effectively. So we'll see how that goes. But I picked up Cloyster. You know, I think it's a good spot where I took it. We're going to keep going. Again, a lot of these picks uh, I don't think really rattled me all that much. Uh, a lot of these picks are just kind of uh, fillers for some people, or really late round picks to fill tier fours, tier five slots. Uh, Komoo, I like that mon a lot. Um, it was kind of on my option. It was on my list had I not gotten Lucario, but because I had Lucario and Latios, it wasn't. I just like how effective I've been using Komoo in the past. So going through the last, the second to last round, I'm looking at something sort of tanky, something sort of defensive, uh, especially another rocker, because I only have one at this point, and that's Gliscor. I really don't want to run rocks every single week on Gliscor, so we end up getting through, and a few mons go that I, I guess I was interested in, Dakers B being one of them, but I don't want another kind of frail-ish mon that's going to have accessibility to rocks, but not one that's going to want to use it all the time. Uh, Alone Persian was kind of on my list, but uh, again, I already have a dark type, and Weavile don't want a second one. I used that in the ICBA. I really liked it then based on the team premise, but it's not like something that I was like dying to take. So I ended up going with Mesprit. It is another pivot mon, it's bulky psychic mon that, you know, isn't Latios in terms of its its defense. Has accessibility to rocks, accessibility to U-turn. I liked it because again I want another rocker. I want something that can can take hits but can also be a support role and having accessibility to healing wish and being fast. I mean I believe it's base 70 speed, so it's going to outspeed your naturally slow walls and being able to, you know, sack itself with a healing wish to, to make something like Coco, Lucario, Weavile back up to full HP is something that I find extremely valuable. I know I will find value in terms of every single week because I like I like using Yuxi. I've used Mesper before, but on this team I can see Mesper's role being that much more important versus on other teams it was a bit more passive, a bit more like a secondary concern. So. You know, I'm excited to see how that is going to function in the overall scheme of the team. We look at some of these last picks. Uh, Articuno in a in an Uber's league. Cool. Mega Latias is going to be annoying to deal with on Randy's team, but you know we'll make that work. Dark Ride Mega Gallade by Leo, I think were really solid picks actually for the last two. Uh, it really kind of staples his entire team really nicely, where he has uh, really solid offensive presence with. Thunderous, Garjomp, Marshadow, and really locks up the rest of his bulky draft with Dark Ride Mega Gallade, which kind of makes his team one of the most threatening, I, I believe. Whereas there are other teams that I don't necessarily like in terms of their rocks accessibility, to my right, you know, or other teams that don't really have the, the proper bulk or even synergy. I mean, there are things on even my team that uh, look a bit suspicious in terms of offensive or even synergistic presence, but. I look at this team and I like the the options I have here. It's not my typical, you know, Volt Turny type style, but it does have things that I've never used before. Things that are bulky that can just take hits. I'm not the type to play a long game. Uh, I want to, you know, get my offense in before you and 
if I have to let one of my walls die, if it dies, oh my god. Uh, and then I move on and I keep playing. Um, but overall, I like to look at the team. There are things that can change. Uh, one of the biggest things, you know, that stood out immediately after the draft was I have one ghost check, and that's Weavile. And then besides that, stab ghost moves just kind of maraud the vast majority of my team. So I gotta fix that. And that's something I'm definitely gonna look at in terms of free agency to kind of patch up. And, and I'll see how things kind of fit and how the, the building works and what looks like it, it fits and what doesn't. And we'll make that transition that transaction for week one um, because I'm not really afraid to use all three of them if, if I absolutely have to as soon as possible to make sure the team flows better versus what the team was right after the draft. So my final pick is going to be Scissor. It's a mon I've used before. It's another bull puncher. Uh, solid U-turn mon. Very powerful mon. It's something I know that I'm very good with in terms of being an effective mon and just something I've used in the past. Hell, I had a lot of success with it back uh, last season in uh, season season 8. You know, using it as a solid U-turner, um, bluffing, and um, really calling my opponent to switch and going for a U-turn when bull punch seemed obvious, things like that. I know I can use that here as well, and it's uh, another defogger, which I'm not going to use it for, but bullet punch, a very strong bullet punch, as well as U-turn, which could also just nab me a kill or get in my Coco Weavile, Lucario, Latios, whatever. So, a lot of these mons in the last are just going to be like really filler mons or something that people are just going to pick just for the hell of it, uh, namely Smeargle or Porygon Z. Um, and then, you know, some things to fill like speed. Like, we look at Goldo's team, and some of his speed options are a bit uh, janky. I mean, we have. Base 100 Zapdos Victini, a little bit faster Superior, uh, and then really, really fast Crobat and Mega Beedrill. So if I face him, I'm going to enjoy seeing how I can manipulate those speed tiers. Um, so the, then we have the Spinning Trash Can itself, making its Valiant Return on Tup's team. Cool. Uh, I hope he enjoys Burke's favorite mon. Uh, love you, Burke. Miss you. Um, you know, Barbaracle gets picked. I think we, we see finally that Lars takes his, his Tier 1 mon, and that's uh, Deoxy's Attack. Very cool mana. I'm excited to see how he, how that's where that works, and as well uh, how Zekrom works. But those are uh, those are absolutely every team. I'm just gonna real quick go and, and show what I picked for my Z user. I know it was a, kind of a, a bit random, but we see how everyone kind of goes through and picks their Z users. I really like Danzas. I think they're really solid choices. Um, also, just so you guys are know, uh, no T1 Mon can be designated as a Z user. No tier 2 mod except Celsius, Lando, or Coco can be de designated as the users. And then everything else, it's choose your best ones on your team to use. So we see that's exactly what Danza does. We see that's exactly what Jolt does. Also, he does have access to Munium Z. Uh, same thing with Lars. Very interesting seeing Steve pick Hydragon. I don't see anything else that would be any better. I mean, Babar Calls barely going to come anyway, so uh, that makes sense. Xerneas cannot run Geomancy, just a heads up on that. Cybertron takes his best ones. Uh, Tup takes his best ones. I mean, Scrafty was a bit weird. I don't know how often this is going to come. I mean, maybe even like, maybe not, maybe Superior could have been a little bit better. But we see, oh, we see Necrostevo takes Landorus T. We're going to see that Nexus takes Celsius, and I'm going to end up taking Coco as my easy user. That all the bonds that were in tier two. Uh, I like I like Envy's tier uh, his his users. I also like. I like Kyle's. Those are, I mean, those are his best options, frankly. Even even Nate's, you know, those are pretty. I mean, Terrakion is just going to be a gigantic buster in 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 tandem with Mewtwo and, and Naganadel. Um, like I said, Nexus takes Celesteela. I end up taking, like I said, Coco and Latios. I think they're the two best options I had on the team, mostly because like Cloyster, just I'm not going to be s smashing and then trying to get a Z move off. Same with Weavile. It's not necessarily a Z user. Valk, Hoopa you, great picks. We keep going. I mean, uh, Randy's going to be garbage at the game, so I don't know when he's ever going to be using a Z, uh, a Z move. Oh, my battery's low. Yeah, I think the rest of the picks just kind of make sense for uh, Aster and Leo. So that is my team. Uh, let me just go real quick to the actual team page. Uh, I'm very excited to use the mods that I was actually going to end up able to draft. Lucario, I'm going to name it, I think, like Zero Exposure or something, or Exposure Points or something meme-ish. Coco, I think it's Overcharge, Weavile, haven't decided what I'm going to name that, we'll see for week one. Uh, my typical names are Vega from Street Fighter or X-23 from uh, Marvel, if it's a female. Gliscor, haven't decided yet, Amoongus, I don't, don't really care. Latios, Nameth, because it's a green jet, and I love the Jets, even though I'm a, they're a sad, 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 sad team. 
Um, Arachnid, I'm going to name it Metroid, I think, because it kind of looks like the like a Metroid from um, from the series. Cthagus, Phantom, Cloyster, uh, Crackclaw from the the house from uh, Game of Thrones. Mesprit, Little Pump, because if you it, literally, I'm telling you guys, go online, look up Little Pump, and then put that alongside to a shiny Mesprit. I swear to God, it's uncanny how both of them look exactly the fucking same. So do it. You'll laugh. Do it. And Scissor's going to be uh, Omega or Adamantium. Because I think that, that name is pretty badass. So that is the team. Uh, and I'm just going to go over my schedule real quick. I know you can't see it. But right here on the right where my mouse pointer is. Our week one match is going to be against the uh, uh, Nate and his New York Noibats. Week two is going to be against Necrostevo. Week three against Aster. Four is going to be against Deathly. Five is going to be against Nexus. Six can be against Randy. Seven against Tup. Uh, Battle of the, tra the Burning Fire Trash Cans. Uh, week 8 against uh, Kansas City Draw Chiefs, uh, Jolt. Week 9 against Danza. And then week 10 against Cybertron and his uh, his Rotoms. So I actually am very excited about my overall schedule. Uh, I'm also excited I don't have to fucking play Lars for the umpteenth time in week 1. Because I swear to God, every time a fucking schedule was made, I was set up to play against Lars as an outer conference match every single year for the past like two seasons. Oh, week one? Who do you want to play? Not Lars? Fuck it. Playing Lars because I swear to God, it's been like the go-to every single season. It's like, hey, hey we're going to play Lars week one again. So I'm glad I don't play him again. He's a, he's trapped in his own division with Leo and, and Envy and Lars. I think I'll kill each other for all I care. So that um, and again, my division is Danza, Aster, and Randy. So uh, I get to play them. It, you know, at varying points of the season. I think. Uh, listen, I put I, I pushed Aster all the way to a one zero uh, based on his you know adamant mega lop against my Masharna, which I ho I thought would work but didn't. But I, I think that game was really fun. I'm excited to play him, Randy. As much of a bastard that he is, I'm excited to play him. He and I have very good trash talk going back and forth. Danza is someone who I've played and, and built with and, and talked to often and you know he's someone who I who I greatly respect. I get to play Jolt who I've never got to play before. Uh, his team terrifies me but I think my team also terrifies him sort of. So we'll see how that one goes and the rest of the teams in the middle there I think are going to be good matches um, against people who I have never played, never even heard of um, or have, are very unaware of so I'll have to get my, uh, my scouting pants on and see how they play and check out all those matches. So Hope you guys are excited. Let me know what you guys think of the team. Let me know what you guys think of my draft. And uh, let me know if you guys have any better nicknames than the ones I have. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'll catch you guys for week one against Nate and his New York Noibats. So until then, later.